Hello, welcome to chapter four, the basics of the 3D brushes. So let's take a look at the brush system that we have here within the ZBrush core. So we're able to call our brushes several different ways. We have our quick selection here down at the bottom. We're just pressing any of these icons will select that brush. Again, I want you to take a note that as you select these, you can see that this icon up here is also changing. So again, let me try a standard brush, and you can see the standard brush is being selected. That's because this, in fact, is a icon to call the entire brush palette that's available. So you can see there are several other brushes that are available to us here at the ZBrush Core, but these brushes at the bottom are the most popular brushes that are used with any ZBrush artist workflow. So we can call our brushes by tapping on the large icon. We can call our brushes by just clicking on any of the small icons here. We can also tap the B key for brush to pull up that same menu that we get when we click the large icon. We can even go to the brush palette here and click on any of the same icons that you find here or our large icon once again. So let's take a look at how we can sculpt with these brushes. So I'm just gonna select our clay buildup brush. Let's move in a little bit here close to the face. Notice that we have a circle on the right side. That is our brush icon, and there is a red square on the other side. Now, the beauty part about ZBrush is as we start sculpting, you'll notice that we sculpt symmetrically. So we only have to worry about sculpting one side of the face while ZBrush takes care of the other side. So to turn on our symmetry and turn off our symmetry, all we have to do is click X. So you can see when I tap the X key, that little square is off. So now if I sculpt, you can see it's only sculpting on one side. If I tap X key, now we have that symmetry again. You can also find this symmetry button within the transform menu and activate symmetry. Notice that we can have symmetry along any of the axes that we choose within the 3D space. So I've been just adding surface here and by adding all I'm doing is brushing across the face with my brush. So I'm currently using a Cintiq, which this is important because ZBrush is pressure sensitive. So the harder I push, you can see the larger and stronger my stroke will be. The lighter I am on my tablet or Cintiq, the slower that buildup is of that surface. So this is how we can start adding or building up our surface or adding clay in this sense. If I want to start digging into the surface or maybe dig into the clay, I'm going to hold my Alt key and then start pushing and you can see that now digs in to our surface. Again, I'm holding the Alt key and then just brushing across the surface. You can see that'll start to dig in to the surface. Now there'll be times where I want to smooth the surface out. So I'm going to hold my Shift key and now just brush across the surface and you can see that'll smooth down our surface. So I can add, then hold my Alt to start taking away, and then now hold my Shift key to lightly smooth that surface back. That's the basics of using the ZBrush 3D brushes within the core. Thank you for watching Chapter 4, and we look forward to seeing you in Chapter 5, which we will cover how do you start to mask within the ZBrush core system. 